you know, I also report on other individuals in the book who have been cured of cancer and, and other terminal illnesses. Wow. Well, I got to tell you, though, and you touched on it, and even Gary will tell you, there's been so many people, they're, you know, they, they're afraid to go to bed at night. I mean, they got anxiety because of the, the things that they've done to them or abduct them against their will. And it sounds like this guy may have some of that going on also. Well, you know what, James and Alon? One of our guests has been on three times. It's coming on the fourth time. It was a former attorney general, uh, assistant attorney general, I should say, a lawyer, very credible. When he was in the Air Force in the mid-70s, uh, him and his buddy went camping, and boy, did they bite off more than they could chew. I don't know if you guys heard the show or not, but they were out camping. They saw some lights. Then all of a sudden, the lights got closer. The next thing it did, it landed. They saw aliens. They were taken aboard the ship. They were stripped naked. They were holding their clothes. They were experimented on. And they, what they did notice was a whole bunch of other pe- people, men, women, uh-huh. and children, naked, holding their clothes. Well, he was lucky. He got, and his buddy got both booted off the UFO. The UFO took off with all these people on it. And didn't he see, like, humanoids and stuff like that in, in t- uh, tubes and stuff like that in liquid, uh, James? Yeah, he was walking, as he's walking on this conveyor belt, he, all he could move was his eyes and he was looking to the side, and in these tubes were these creatures that looked like hybrids or something weird, and they had their eyes shut, and one of them opened his eyes and looked right at him, and he freaked him out. Matter of fact, he has nightmares to this day about that. Yeah, he packs a gun right next to his headboard with a flashlight. Yeah, and, you know, he's not the only one. We've talked to several uh, people, won't mention their names, but you know who they are, that they all have the same pattern. They they keep a gun and a flashlight right next to their drawer, not not that it could help if you could even be able to use it, because usually you're immobilized, but, you know, that seems to be a pattern, though. Yeah, how about Whitney, too? I think he also went to a stage where he had a gun, too, at one point. And now we had Whitney on the show here last week, and he kind of now is feeling that, People that have been implanted, that he's actually starting to figure out what the implant is. And uh, what he was telling us is basically that they're so more intelligent than us that they really don't know how to communicate with us where we'd understand. But he said that the last year or two, he's been getting subtle things. When he's thinking about something, he'll get an answer. He'll go on the computer and all of a sudden he's typing something that he's not even aware of and he's getting the answers to things. So I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot out there we don't know. Hopefully, we learn something someday. But I, you know, I wonder if that uh, does David have an implant? Does he think he's got an implant, uh, Juan? Not that I know of. Um, he's never mentioned that before. You know, David's situation is somewhat different than most abductees because he, you know he was continuously brought to these locations and. Uh, they had actually come into the home as well. You know, they he, he used to tell me about when these uh, these gray like being the grays would have like tours of his home. <laughs> Literally, they would just show up, and they were. Fa- it seemed that these beings were fascinated with how uh, humans lived in their habitation and such. And he he said it happened. Frequently, he says, wife used to get really upset about it because, you know, she'd be home alone during the day and these things would just show up. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it does sound comical when you start hearing about it and listening to it and reading about it. And it, I've got it detailed in the book as well. But, um, you know, it... <laughs> It, you know, David's story is quite unique. It, it, it's unlike, it's not like much of what you hear from other experience or reports, but um, it's very profound. And, uh, you know, and I'll be quite honest with you. There is a lot that I haven't even disclosed because, quite frankly, I, I think some of it is, is just uh, just wouldn't be taken that well. Uh, maybe one day we'll go into it a little further, but 
I kind of put more in there than I thought I would, but I haven't put it all in there. Well, you need to get a hold of uh, Terry Lovelace. Now, he's going to be back on the show again here, uh, I think the 18th of December. But of all the people I've ever talked to since 1976, you know, about abductions, this guy is very, very credible. I mean, the 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 even uh, when he was in the military, the the guys in the suits, the dark suits, came and saw him while he was in the hospital, and then injected him with uh, truth uh, sodium pentothal, uh-huh. and and try to convince him that he didn't see anything. They, they, he had a camera with him. They try to pump him and say, "Well, why didn't you take pictures?" Yeah, the whole little routine that they do. But this guy is so credible, and the, some of the stuff he he told me it, it literally scared the you know what out of me more than probably anybody else I ever had on, even more than what Whitney had to say. You know, it, it, you know the the things that that or even like Whitney when he was on the show last week saying that you know these. Visitors would come and see him while he was sleeping at night and, and touch him and then remove sperm from him and do all this weird stuff. But I've heard this from so many different other people, too. So, I, yeah, it, it does happen. I mean, uh, these these home invasions, these home encounters are, are much more common than what they used to be. You know, it, it seemed that in the early part of ufology, when people started getting these abduction reports. It was uh, UFO abductions, or you'd be taken aboard a craft, either at a, at a location other than the home, but there were a lot of them at home, at home as well. But then it's kind of evolved over the years to multiple type beings, different races of beings, and uh, being abducted through portals. Uh, that's something we see more and more of now. Uh the abductions themselves have kind of evolved. Uh, it was mostly in the beginning of uh, body fluids being removed, sperm from men, or tissue, or uh, eggs from females. But it's kind of going beyond that now. Uh, it still happens, but now you're you're getting to the point where uh, fertilized females would actually uh, be aborted after. I went the first trimester. I've had one individual who I've been talking to for the past year who had that happen to her six times, and uh, I actually saw a um, a video that she took during one of these encounters at home where it l- literally lifted her off the bed. Um, uh, very strange. Her boyfriend and the, her dog were not even aware of it like they were knocked out and but she she levitated off the bed now the beings weren't seen uh i don't know if this levitation was some type of uh you know some type of transport for her or if it was done there but this is you know she has talked about this to me on several occasions and uh I believe she's re- has really been going through this. So, um, you know, it, it, it's just that and a lot of other bizarre encounters that uh, I have been uh, receiving over the years and uh, tried to describe in the book. And what's the name of the book again, Lon? It's Alien Disclosure, Experiencers Expose Reality. And uh, if you go to Amazon, just put my name in the search, Lon Strickler, and uh, just Google it, or not Google it, but search for it on Amazon. It'll come up. I have several other books. The uh, the book I released in December 2017 was Mothman Dynasty, Chicago's The Wing Humanoids. And I'm currently working on a flying cryptid book where I do the latest updates on the Chicago phenomena and other flying cryptid and humanoid phenomena. Interesting. Now, if I, I, if somebody wanted to make a donation to help you, because I know the cost factor must be horrendous doing all this stuff. How can they get contact you for a don't making a donation? 
Well, they can go to the website, which is phantomsandmonsters.com, and uh, I had donation buttons on the site. Or they can go directly to PayPal and uh, use my email, which is lawnstrickler at phantomsandmonsters.com, and make a direct donation. Uh, I also take donations through Facebook Messenger. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the easiest way of doing it. Okay. Now, also, guys, because we're getting almost at the top of the hour, uh, and I only had you scheduled to nine. Do you guys want to hang around another half an hour, or do you, you guys need to jump off at the top of the hour? That's up to the bias. You're the one that has to get up tomorrow morning and go to work. <laughs> oh, yeah, shoot. Um, I probably should uh, just call it a night at, uh, well, it'd be 11 p.m. our time. But, yeah, sorry, Gary. Oh, that's no problem. Lon, do you want to hang on to the bottom of the hour then? Uh, or... Sure. Sure, I could hang on. Okay, now. Uh, Tobias, before you jump off here and we do the news and all that again, uh, again, where can they, the name of your book, where can they find it? And, uh, and do you take donations on your website too to help support what you're doing? Um, in a way, sure. So the book is The Lake Michigan Mothman High Strangeness in the Midwest. Uh, you can find that on Amazon. Um, you know, you can just search in the uh, the Amazon search bar uh, by the the title uh, Lake Michigan Mothman. You can search by Tobias Wayland, um, and then uh, you know I encourage everybody uh, who would like to support us uh, to support us by visiting the uh, website. You know, we do um, news articles, feature articles, uh, lots of uh, cool community outreach stuff with various paranormal artists. Just there's a a, a whole lot to to check out and. And that website traffic does help us out a lot. And also, you know, follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Tumblr, Instagram, all of the, the, the social medias. And, um, you know, if you're really interested in what we do and you want to be a part of the Singular 40 in Society, you can always go to patreon.com slash singular 40 and, uh, and, and sign up. And we... We like to do a lot of cool stuff with our uh, society members, including, you know, monthly live streams, uh, uh, investigation videos, uh, uh, different different types of stuff like that. Um, so if that is of interest to you at all, I encourage you to check that out as well. Great. Uh, you know, Tobias, having you on, I'm so proud of you with that book. And I'll tell you, having a wife who's a graphic artist, you know, you are so lucky, too. It helps a lot, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and again, you know, my wishes, you know, best wishes on your book sales. I Everything I've read, people are really impressed with you. And uh, I think the book is going to be a great read. So, people, you need to go on Amazon and get a copy of it. You know, I don't endorse books very often. So this is one book I really recommend if you believe in, you know, Mothman and stuff like that. Well, uh, Tobias, I guess we'll catch you, what, next week uh, to do a report? Yeah, absolutely. I will I will talk to you then. Okay. So anyway, uh, Lon, if you want to hang on, uh, James, has, uh, James has a lot of questions to ask you after the top of the hour, and we'll continue on to the bottom of the hour. So again, Tobias, have a great one. You thirst for some significance of the both dimensional kind. You enter a realm of spirit, of sight and sound and mind. Your radio is a cosmic doorway and your psyche when you tune in to Gary and the Sun and Night Dreams After Dark.